Hello, everyone. It's very great to be here with you. We are joined by Anna Talbot, Malile from the Black Power Station, Viwe, and Liam, who are on our panel discussion today. It's terrific to have all of them. We're going to get them to introduce themselves, and then straight after that, we're going to get into asking them some questions about what exactly they do and formulating a discussion about how we can be innovative in Africa and how we can progress toward a more better social idea. So, Anna, we're going to start with you, if you guys wouldn't mind introducing yourselves. Sure. So I'm Anna Talbot and I work in the Community Engagement Division at Rhodes University. Um, and I describe myself as an education activist. Um, so everything that I do is around education. Um, I run two volunteer programs in the Community Engagement Division, along with the Social Innovation Hub that looks at community cohesion and um, social innovation that uses digital storytelling to share people's stories of innovation and novel ideas. Thank you, X. Um, I'm an artist. I call myself an art activist. Um, I run the Black Power Station. Um, yeah, other than that, I live in Makanda, you know? Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Viwe Matinda. Hi everyone, um, I'm Viwe Matinda. I am also from Gramstown. I'm currently doing a Masters in Fine Art. I'm also a researcher at the Arts of Africa and the Global South. Um, it's a department within the Fine Art Department. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Oh, 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 wait. <laughs> did I, did I, did I, <laughs> I forgot to finish off the question. So, oh, so why I keep on doing what I do, right? That's, that's, yeah. that's part of the, the question, right? Yes. Uh, I'm asking. Yes, no, it is. You can. Okay. It's, okay, okay, sorry. So um, I'm, I'm an artist, a uh, visual artist, that is. And my practice is, um, over the years, has become, you know, the, intertwined with, um, my spirituality and my daily life. So I keep on doing what I do because it's not just arts and then it's viewer. It's kind of like, you know, the marriage of both. So yeah, there's no viewer without art and there's no art without <laughs> viewer. Yeah, basically. Cool. Thank you very much. That's a terrific answer. Yeah. Liam, over to you. Um, hey, I'm Liam Howard. I studied at Rhodes for four years. Um, currently a freelancer, journalist, and artist. Um, I was project manager of Skate Ubuntu's skate park um, and I ran a lot of their media. Why I keep on doing what I do. Um, I love skateboarding. I think it has a great potential in South Africa to improve livelihoods, um, especially children's livelihoods. And I just think there should be more projects in the Eastern Cape, especially. And yeah, I kind of want to carry on Skate Ubuntu and expand to other places in the EC. Sure, that's very cool. All right, well, thank you for all your introductions, everyone. That's lovely. We're going to get in some questions. And Liam, I think we'll start with you, just as you were the last to finish off there and carrying on with the sure. of what you're doing. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting thing, the skate park. How long have you been with the, the skate park project? And, projects and where you there from okay. the start when this all developed what's the what's the drive towards wanting to expand all of this well um first of all sean and shannon approached me they're the founders of skate one two and they wanted me to make a video um for their uh, thunder fun page um and it kind of just snowballed from there i kind of um just carried on with all of their media i did lots of promotional videos um I did a short documentary on our workshops uh, and yeah, I, I then, uh, I, I guess naturally I just became project manager of the park, um, basically just with admin and stuff. Um, where we want to go, I think we, first of all, we want to expand the Slalani skate park. Um, it's pretty small, but it's a very like innovative design because um, there's like so many children who uh, want to skate but there's only limited resources we have like 20 30 skateboards only and there's over 100 children who 
who are interested and more. So, um, yeah, first we would like to expand in Grahamstown, um, get more people on skateboards, get more shoes for children and yeah, expand as a space, not just become a skate park, but become sort of a park um, in Tlalani where people can, uh, you know, come and sit and look at the, the view and like watch people skate. It's quite a great um, environment where we are. So, yeah. That sounds delightful. And do you think, just lastly on this, do you think that this is having a great effect on the community and on the kids that are involved at all? For sure. I mean, if you look at other projects like us, you see how they benefit not just the people who are skating, but the outside community. Um, it just, especially in communities like Lalani, where there are so, so little resources, um, it, it, the municipality is hardly involved. So something like this is very exciting um, in a community where hardly anything is happening. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice space for even, all, I've seen a lot of elders there come and sit and just watch the sun go down. And yeah, it's just, it's just becoming a great space for everyone, I think. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. Thanks, Liam. Sure. So um, X, on yourself and the, the Black Power Station, the the Black Power Station seems to become quite a cultural hub of late. A lot of people are talking about it. Um, I myself went there the other night. I got served a lentil soup and got to watch a show, which was just an experience I, I've never had before, kind of in going and getting fed and then um, and kind of watching art. Uh, so what is, your, what is your background in art and in culture? And what kind of influenced you to want to start the Black Power Station to influence the community of Makanda? It's a long story, but I'll share part of it. Um, first, I'm born here in Makanda, and being born here, you culturally, from being a closer man, you're bound by certain rules that you should be placing impact in the society you live in. And so when I started rapping, my uncle didn't like me rapping. So he gave me a book called Time Longer Than a Rope. So he told me a lot of stuff about South Africa, the imbalances. So I started rapping in Isikosa around about 1996. So I decided when I started rapping in Isikosa, people responded to me differently than I would rap in English. Um, and then from there, um, my culture and myself, I wanted as viewers explaining that you cannot escape the two, you know, they are you. So I started in my room, I used to have a place uh, with my group called Deaf Camp, where we started teaching people how to write raps, you know, also teaching people how to be self-reliant, you know, in the community, you know, with the whole mindset of saying, um, reading Steve Biko, you know, the idea of Steve Biko that you're on your own, you must be able to create life around you. And even reading Steve Biko to the sense that if Steve Biko during the time of upper date, they built a clinic, you know, and us now in these days, no one is chasing us with guns, no one is depriving us to congregate. So why not have a space where people can be together and share ideas and share a common understanding. So basically, um, the Black Power Station became that. And the reason why you would find food, you would find all of these things, because we believe uh, we want to build a society away from the broken one that we inherited. You know, mm -hmm. we're a society where you can feel that um, art is not far from who you are. You know, yes, the Black Power Station doesn't have money. It is not funded, but we still want to make people feel home by you watching, let's say you came a long way. We don't know where, you, where you've been. So you need to be fed in order that if there's something that is disturbing you, whether you are hungry or whatever, that should be sorted out. And then the art should play another role. So in a way that we're trying to create a home you're trying to create um, what is me out of, you know, out of the, my experiences to try and say, look, man, 
um, I wouldn't live with an empty stomach, but at the same time, the brain must be fed also. So the Black Power Station is that space where you find all different types of people, uh, books, because I was, I was initiated in the whole world of understanding the world through books. I travel through books, you know, so that's why the Black Power Station is the way it is, you know, so it's trying to build a space outside Rhodes University because anything else creative, if the theater at Rhodes is closed, nothing is happening in town. You know, mm -hmm. if like when I used to rap, if I don't go to all 65, the audience there will be just people in town. And then it took us more than 10 years to get an audience that is from the township outside of town to the, uh, the place. And I decided I'm tired of bringing an audience to a place I cannot control. You know, where if you're an artist, you wanna do an experiment, you can't do it. We need a home that can build an audience outside the time frame of Rhodes University that is beyond the township, you know? So that's what the Black Power Station is, is trying to build an audience for art and for also build an intellectual capacity that says we're greater than what we're told to be. Mm. Awesome. That's so cool. Viwe, I want to get your thoughts on your involvement. You, your, your background is fascinating. You've got a master's in fine arts. You, you clearly are interested in this kind of thing in terms of creating and innovating in an artsy way. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background and your keenness to get involved with X's work at the Black Power Station and just your own background in, in all of this. Okay, let me start with my background. Um, so if you remember, I did say that my practice is kind of um, married with, you know, who I am in essence. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the research that I do actually is also comes from, you know, wanting to not only do better as a person, but also to see where I come from, because I'm also from Grahamstown at Georgia. Um, you know, to, to see, you know, my role as an artist and what I can bring, mm. you know. So this year mm. I'm doing my master's and this is my first year and my project, well, it's kind of like a perpetual thing. So it's not like um, I'm starting here, I'm ending here. So throughout undergrad to now, I've sort of been unpacking or rather understanding the, the philosophy of Ubuntu. Um, so what, what I've learned is that it's actually, you know, it's got all these layers and, you know, one layer that you sort of begin with is the self. And, and um, so how I sort of got interested with the community and wanting to do work outside of my practice was <clears throat> uh, I had to, sorry, I'm a bit distracted. <laughs> So I, I had to, I learned that to be, you know, of use and to be efficient and in, 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 in to anyone and the community, you need to be, you know, you need to know self, you need to be better, you know, in self, you need to be, you know, have anatomy. Um, and that sort of grows into, you're going to understand the environment around you, and then it's going to be able to foster, you know, relations around you. So, um, it started from just wanting to do art and then it became a thing of, okay, who am I doing this for? And it sort of took a long turn around and it came back to me and it was like, okay, I was forced to look at myself and if I'm going to be of help to anyone else, you know, how am I, you know, am I, um, how am I mentally, physically, you know, and sort of spiritually and how I came into contact with Uta X Ubudi. Um, I've kind of known him for a while um, through my mother that is, <laughs> we, we, we kind of from the same family. So I've known him for a while, for a while now. And uh, he, I went there one time and he was like, let's talk about performance art because performance art is one of the prominent uh, disciplines in my in my practice because I am a cross-disciplinary uh, artist because I do installation, there's sound, 
there's photography, but performance is like the main, um, is the main discipline. And we went there to sort of, well, the, the initial idea was to sort of talk around the concept of performance, mm. but then there's, there's three of us actually, we started a collective, uh, it's called Sunday Service. <clears throat> and uh, we, we were going to talk about performance, but we kind of, as we got into it, we realized that, you know, performance is, it's not just something that you learn at school and, you know, performativity is in everything that you do within your space. And we wanted to talk about how performance art has actually, you know, made us better as people. And bringing that to the power station was actually quite rejuvenating for us as artists because we always work within the institution and just being in that space, you know, being around a different kind of audience was, uh, was nice and different. And, you know, you kind of get to see the direction in which you want to take because with working with the community, I, I, I don't want to just go in and be like, hey, I'm gonna do this, you know. Um, uh, I'm not there to save anyone. I'm not like a savior or like anything. I'm just wanting to, you know, be aware of myself, be aware of my movements so that I don't go in, cause more problems or, you know. So going there kind of was inspiring for me because it sort of was the first step in that direction. I don't know if I've answered you, but it's, yeah. And it's just fascinating to get the sense of how you and X have amalgamated your interests and passions to, to create what you are now. So thank you. That's true. Yeah. Right. So Anna, just kind of like a general question um, with regards to the, the work you do, you know, I've, I've looked, I've gone and looked and seen you've, you've done a lot of work with the, with the scouts group here in Makanda, um, you, like you said, you, you're very involved with your, um, what you termed education activism. Uh, so, but kind of what is the, the, the general purpose or goal, you know, behind uh, the, the work you do? You, you were also very involved in Durban. Was, was, that, was the work that you do in Durban very easy to, to um, implement here? Was, was, it, was it a natural movement towards becoming involved in the community? And really what was that purpose of the community engagement that you wanted to do here in Makanda? Yeah, so universities are set up for three purposes, really. And um, they're set up for teaching and learning, research and community engagement. And the cool thing about what I do is the community engagement underpins um, research and teaching and learning. And so thinking more broadly about innovation beyond just the creative aspect of it. Innovation is there to transform society, to progress society. And so the role of community engagement in innovation is really to bring together people so that we can progress and transform societies. So therefore, I, you know, I see higher education more broadly as a transformative institution um, at least that's what the goal is meant to be and so community engagement plays a really cool role in connecting up the social innovations innovators in our society like skate ubuntu like the blacks power station um, like projects like the manzi impilo or other community engagement projects so we're really just playing the facilitator role in terms of connecting up what's already happening and with the idea that we are creating these knowledge democracies sharing the knowledge sharing the innovation um, for transformation in society so i think if we look broadly at what innovation is and how we can connect all the role players in our community um, how successful that can be and so community engagement we have several interventions that kind of progress this innovation um, and one of the key things that we're doing now is the social innovation hub, which um, we have pop-up labs that can be used. Um, we have semi-fixed labs all around the township. Um, and we also have our fixed lab on campus. And the idea is to make the university more porous by sharing these ideas um, and giving people access to digital platforms and digital technology to be able to do that. Um, 
So I think all of these things are quite transferable to whatever situation. You know, if I think about the role we played in Skate Ubuntu, it was just in the initial phases. And then really they flew in terms of trying to find a spot for them to set up. Um, I mean, they've, you can hear from Liam how amazing that project's been. Um, another project that's really been successful is the Amans and Pilo project, where again, it was the ECD forum, the early childhood forum, they came to us and, you know, there was this issue. We have a water crisis. Our children are being becoming sick because of the water crisis. And they started innovating themselves. And all we were doing was the acceleration, connecting them up to businesses, connecting them up to partners who help them install tanks in their schools. And now all, all the ECD centers in Grahamstown have tanks and reliable water sources. Um, so really just the liaison role and kind of accelerating what's already happening is um, what community engagement does and thinking about innovation more broadly in terms of progressing society and advancing our own community um, yeah so really transferable skills I think everything I've done in my life um, and the projects I've been have been towards activism and progressing society um, and I think that this new lease in terms of social innovation really helps me locate myself in social change. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, it does, definitely. Cool, thanks, Hannah. Uh, we want to just turn to two questions that we're going to ask each of you the same question. And Viwe, we're going to start with you because we know you're on a timeline. Um, just talking about your background, talking about everything that you're involved in. When you think of the idea of innovation in Africa, this can seem like an oxymoron, you know, innovation and transformation and newness in a developing continent and country like Africa and South Africa, respectively. Um, the two don't really go together. How, how is it that in your own work individually, but also in your work with X at the Black Power Station, how are these things creating innovation? How is it innovative? How is it developing society and, and do, creating change in Gramstown, Wakanda. Um, just for some clarity, we only just recently started, mm. um, you know, coming together. But I can say <laughs> that I am excited for, for what's to come. Um, but um, in terms of, 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 of my practice, and, you know, that X inspires me a lot because, you know, he's sort of got the experience and, and has, you know, done many of, many of the things that, you know, I aspire to do as an artist, which is to go out, you know, and inspire, you know, impact in some kind of way. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's really just, you know, sharing my, my thoughts and my ideas. Um, so let me start by, by giving some context. Um, I, I am I am spiritually gifted and you know one way you'd expect someone who is gifted is you know to there's a certain place there's a certain area that you'd go to but you know I've I've sort of which has become weird for me myself as well because my spirit guides have also like used this platform as a way to sort of communicate and so I'd say it's innovative for me because through my own work, I'd say, you know, healing or like doing some, some, some activism or, 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 you know, just inspire, wanting to inspire and then leave a, an inspiring message for someone, you know, via, you know, a photograph or a performance, you know, or, you know, sound, you know, so, so for me, it's just, how you know my talents and and sort of like my gift you know have kind of sort of come together but also to have a platform like a wonderful platform like you know the black power station um to sort of you know be able to to manifest you know these ideas and you know translate and decode you know because sometimes some of the things that that i think of you know one wouldn't be able so <coughs> sorry <laughs> sorry so 
I, I, I got sidetracked there. So um, with, you know, with, with spirituality, some of the things it's very hard. So, so if I was doing art, it would be very hard for you to look at a photograph, you know, and, you know, get it. Whereas with performance art, um, I'm able to engage with you, you know? Um, so it's the merging of performance, spirituality, and, you know, this lovely space for me um, that I would say creates this innovation. Um, sorry, I, I got sidetracked there. But let me, let me say, because I'm running out of time, um, it comes all together, you know, because we're all creatives. Uh, for me, it's, it's sorry, I've, I've got a phone call and I need to like really pick it up now. Uh, can I pick it up and then come back? Sure. Is that fine? No worries. Sorry, I'm sorry. I think X, if we if we go to you and just posing the same question, can anything remotely innovative come out of Makanda? Is there a chance for there to be this grand, you know, progress in terms of creating and innovating in a small town in the Eastern Cape like ours? I think it's possible. You know, um, I believe that if there are people willing, anything can happen. You know, if we can have big malls mm. like the Pick and Pays, we can have the Rhodes University in this city, why not? You know, it's a matter of gathering the people who have the intention to make change. Like, I decided to work with my friends to bring out this space. Um, it was not because we said there was funding somewhere we said something needs to be done where people got together and be motivated to, to be themselves. So yes, the Black Power Station is the art, but art itself is this tool that we're using to instigate the minds of the people who are deprived of any uh, financial support, deprived of any mind to actually innovate and believe that there could be something. So in a way, I feel that having a space like this is that innovative, you know? And to understand that being innovative, it means you must learn to use what's around you in your benefit, you know? So I think in short, <laughs> this is an example, you know, having like, for an example, having Anna from Rose Community Engagement, I think that's innovative enough, but I think if also as the university, they could look at how the people in the society are skillful and enhance that so that even if there's no funding, the, the, the creativity can continue. Because so, that's how I think the Black Power Station's power is at, is that it's, an, it's, a, it's a venue and a mindset and an idea that exists outside of funding because its core idea is to have people having a space to create, having a space to speak about themselves and having those who have money to come and see that. Which, cause of, for an example, for me as a young person who never went to university and in someone in this country you are supposed like to put it blunt like this, to be a black person in South Africa, you have to convince people that you worth something. So I think the black power station, when someone enters in the room and I've accounted many people who would ask me, who's your boss? Because <laughs> they assume that there's someone else who's in charge of me. Maybe other artists, other creatives around me are pushing their energies towards me to do what I do. But literally, I don't have someone who tells me what to do. You know, this is my own innovative of a space that is trying to build a society that has been broken using the arts. You know, you know, meeting the skate Ubuntu. The first time I met them, I met Sean. I was like, Sean, I met the Black Power Station. There's a part there I think we should try and take over. And then, and then we actually 
said to I said to them, I will put give you right to Nikki, but for me, right. I would also tell her this is the best place for uh, to start start a skater. And then mm -hmm. they're there, and then people are do going there, and then so in a way, I think at the end of the day, in short, innovation, yes, when people are willing to work together, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Can I just add on? Yeah, I, absolutely. Do you guys agree? I just want to, yeah, I just want to add on yeah. um, X's idea of funding. Um, and I think that funding seems to be the huge hang up of innovation, which is such a sad um, perception. Um, and I was a bit upset that, you know, the starting point of this discussion was that innovation kind of can't happen in a developing world. Like, I think that Africa has huge potential, um, particularly um, as a developing continent. And I think South Africa even more so because we have more resources than some of our um, other African countries. And I think that the, the idea of funding, funding has been a stumbling block for so long um, that we really need to find different provocations for innovation. And I think um, organizations like Skate Ubuntu, like Manzi and Pilo, like um, the social innovation hubs, like the Black Power Station, um, need to be those spaces of potential, of unlocking potential for innovation. Mm, um, for sure. Africans really do have so much. I mean, just in this panel, how many ideas have been shared? How much passion and drive is there to create change? Um, and I mean, the work that we do at Community Engagement, we're constantly coming across people like this. I mean, we have 78 full-time community partners. All of them have incredible ideas. They are driving change in the city. Um, so there is a need and there is potential. And I think that, I mean, obviously government has to play a role in innovation because nothing can exist really without money. But the stuff that people are doing with the little that they do have, you know, with the assets that we do have is incredible. And I think that to build on that is so important. Yeah, I wanted to add on something for a long time. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to agree with X. Sorry. Um, like, I think innovation, um, like, it can just be a group of friends that say, to put it bluntly, like, fuck it, like, what's what's stopping us like why do i have to wait for like a corporate sponsor why do i have to wait for like you know donations and stuff um and like our relationship with the black power station um uh, as excel was really cool because we're like two um organizations that were a group of friends i guess or individuals that were like we need to change something in grahamstown it's there's as we all know in Grahamstown, it's it's super divided um, socioeconomically in all the all the aspects and like skater ones who started like we need a change we need to bring the two sides of town together because there really is nothing that uh, that brings people together and it's it's hard like you you, you look there's like literally spaces in Grahamstown that are you, you you only see wide faces and you, you know, like you just you struggle to you struggle to grasp the fact that some people haven't even traveled you know 500 meters um so i think innovation can just be like because a lot of stuff in south africa stops because the municipality gets involved and like mm. i know like i don't want to shit on the municipality but to be honest they weren't very helpful in like the aftermath or like the the actual building of the park and they were more of a hurdle for us they were more of a uh, a sort of like they were kind of yeah there was just it, the politics of it became too much mm. whereas we're trying to be removed from the politics as this as like an entity i guess so i think innovation in africa oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, to, sorry that you got cut off there liam we're gonna get back straight to huh. no. Instead of, you know, and, uh, uh, no worries. I mean, you were just um, talking, Cole. I didn't want to. I didn't want to say, "Oh, we've got a minute left," because it's funny. It says less than a minute, and then ten minutes later, it's still threatening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to wait for rain. Shit. Yeah. Get going again. Sure.
But I mean, it's true. Hey, I, you know, I think some of the most innovative means in South Africa come from small towns like like Makanda. Mm -hmm. The fact that we've got so many people that are here for different reasons. We've got big schools. We've got you know lots of schools. Yeah. You know I mean? We've got the university. We've got young people. It's a town full of kids, dude. Yeah, young people that are just raring to do something, and you know this idea that nothing can happen from here is is yeah getting very overrated I yeah i think I, oh sorry yeah well I'll, I'll be short i mean i think a lot of that has to do with i mean you look at it as a whole system and you know systems sort of correct themselves and and why why do we see so much so many innovative ideas with community engagement in graham summers because there's, it's a broken system and i think x mentioned that earlier we live in a broken system and and the younger generation I can feel is just frustrated and ideas come out of frustration and anger and, and passion. And like, that's what we're mm -hmm. witnessing right now. I think as a society, especially in Grahamstown. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Just to build on what all of you are saying, I think, you know, change requires a critical mass of people and the resources that they bring. And I think that that's one thing that Makanda has going for it is a critical mass of, frustrated angry um yeah. people <laughs> who want to change what the environment they're in um so yeah i think that our people our social capital is a huge thing for us and i think because of the university and using students in that change um mm. you know we have a real advantage over other small towns particularly for sure hugely yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a good example for that would be the, I think it's a s small example, but it's the coronavirus. I mean, you think about how much attention Gramstown in and of itself will get, you know, the, the need for masking, the need for distancing. You go to other towns, mm. and there's nothing. Um, not to say yeah. that this is, you know, disgraced in and of itself, but it, it, there's something so unique about a small town like Makanda. The fact that it is in the poorest province, the fact that it does have all these, as you mentioned, and, and Ray's going to bring this up in the next question, the fact that there is such a divide in the town. Um, yeah, it's, it's shocking how it plays such a big role. And even you mentioning the fact that the municipality, I was going to bring it up just before you, you mentioned it, the fact that they're actually a hurdle instead of a, a help. I think, unfortunately, sure, they are a help at this stage. Yeah. yeah. Cool, I know where Ray Ray is. Uh, So, yeah, <laughs> well, okay, for you. I think... hello? Yes, sorry, yes. No, I was saying part of my, my thinking is that how do you, how do you start, you know, when you know that in this city we live in, you know, um, there's certain unsaid rules, you know, about how things are done. You know, I think the municipality, yes, might be the bigger problem, but I think the main thing that makes the city not have all, not use the resources that it has, and resources mean people, you know, never mind money that people have, but people have, don't have a central place where it's not politically driven, you know? So hence for me, I think having like places like the Black Power Station is where you know that we try by all means to not discuss politics of the past, but we do discuss them in a way that is innovative enough to say, what can we do to bring a, a solution? Because anything that has to, to do with innovation is about creating a conducive space for people to engage in. I think we need the universities and individuals like everyone who's in this uh, conversation is to realize the main stumbling block is how the society is structured and how the society itself doesn't have, um, doesn't have a central place where people meet without uh, complaining. 
Um, people only meet here when there's a protest, you know, um, where do you see the society coming together, there's no water, we protest because it's a common thing. But we don't use common thing that which is living, a hospitable society means we could, should come together irregardless if there's no crisis. Because there is a crisis because young people are growing up and our parents might have never got a chance to mingle with their peers, we, whether they're white, black, Indian, colored, there was never a central place for these people to meet. Yeah. Maybe for young people, we need to get to a point where we create a space that it says, whether you are visiting as a student, whether you are traveling, there should be that central space, or maybe a tour guide type of thing, or a venues where people can experience uh, 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 like, a, like a, a society that we dream of, you know, where people can mm. hang together. Like, I'm not pushing the Black Power Station, but I think we're trying to strive for that because you find Rhodes University students, you find local people who are business people, you find people in the township who come here in one space. So mm. it makes the space uh, an mm. environment when you come in, you don't have to explain who you are. The environment yeah. allows you to fit in. Even if mm -hmm. there are hard topics being discussed, then there's a room for you to even ask a question. There's no one who's gonna ask you, say, why are you asking a question? Because you're not affected by this. Because the space itself allows people to voice out their, their what, what is in them. So for me, I think, that's the most innovation. That's where innovation begins, you know, um, where all these powerful institutions and powerful minds come together and say, for the sake of the next generation, what do we do? Leave the politicians yeah. out. We'll talk to them later, you know, because <laughs> they will argue for hours. If you want to change, let's do it. And we can't change people over 60 unless it's a death threat. Doctor yeah. will tell them that you need to exercise, they will do it because no one wants to die. But if it's about ideology, they stay there, you know? So we can't change them, you know? but we can show them that there's yeah, a chance. Yeah. Uh, just to add on that, X, I think while you were gone, um, I was saying, I think like a big problem in Graham's time and you were speaking about a broken society earlier, is like social integration. Um, whether it, not just race, just even more culture than race, rather. Let's not even talk about race as an issue. I'd rather say like the the cultural differences. Like we have so many uh, other African people from other African countries like come into the university space. We have it's like a Grahamstown is a microcosm of like the southern tip of Africa. Yet we're one of the most socially divided places I've ever lived in. And like I think. Yeah, I think innovation starts with the storytelling on an individual level. I think like we got to look at communi uh, community engagement as rather storytelling and, and, and two individuals sharing ideas, no matter like what political disposition they came from. And I like that idea of having a political free space because that, that, exactly, that exactly allows people to do what I've just said, you know, have a conversation without all these uh, labels or I don't know if you know what I'm trying to say. Mm. Baggage is of the past. Yeah. Yeah, man. That yeah, that's it. Does make sense, man. And you know, like this this last question that I'm gonna kind of throw out there has definitely been answered through the, um, you know, what you guys have just been throwing around. But I, I'm still gonna put it out there anyways, just you know, for for argument's sake. When, when, when people talk about Grahamstown um, or Makanda, a lot of the time they, you know, they, they talk about it being very divided. There's, there's a racial gap, there's, a, um, and there's a, a financial gap that comes along with it. Uh, I've, I've heard it jokingly being referred to as a civil war between Grahamstown and Makanda before. Uh, so it's uh, it, like, what do you guys think needs to be done for innovation to occur in this town? What, what do you think... Um, the first steps are that need to be taken for, for, for those two communities to come together and start to move towards um, 
a, a common goal instead of, you know, having these two separate agendas. Liam, do you, do you wanna do you wanna take it off quickly just to start it off? I mean, it's a it's a very loaded question, and it's mm -hmm. it can be answered in so many different ways. I think. I I, I still just. I think people, because it's a, it's a small town, it is possible to to know a lot of people, and I I just think so many people just don't um, they just don't want to integrate, I guess, uh, and without wanting to integrate uh, the resources from like the resources, the social resources you can get from from speaking to different types of people, becoming friends with um, all sorts of cultures. And I, I don't know, I just think if you, uh, if you block yourself off from being an open-minded person, you, you are killing a society because those social resources are needed, like even on an individual level. Yeah, I think that courageous conversations just to add to what Liam was saying is you know you can know so many people but deeply knowing someone creating that warm relationship um, mm. is so critical to transcending whatever divide there is and I think that society even though we're years after apartheid now is still really fear fear based um, fear of the unknown fear of crossing over, you know, the shop right border. Um, there's so many different fears, like fear even coming into the university as, you know, this ivory tower, it, you know, yeah. both ways. And so to have courageous conversations and find opportunities where people are comfortable to have those courageous op um, conversations is so important. So things like consciousness cafes um, and digital storytelling and, um, volunteerism, where there are safe, almost cushy spaces that people can then build up their confidence to be able to go above and beyond. Um, and breaking those divides, I think, is really important. Well, for me, it's going to go back to what I was saying. You know, um, I, try, I try to be practical in whatever I do, you know. Um, this city, I've known, there's many people that knows me. Uh, many people that knows me have resources. But it's just that I think the approach is that there needs to be a social system of saying, how do we transform the community we live in? Without, because I know for a fact is that um, having a big institution like Rhodes University um, that has plenty of students who go to the township to do their research for the sake of their marks to pass, you know, and then when that is done, he's throwing a garbage bin, you know, I've seen that many times to myself, done to me. And then you realize that the, the consciousness, I think the idea how a university in a bigger, in a small town should be operating or the whole um, environment needs to be restructured. You know, we need to write a new manifesto for the town that says um, we need to create, like let's say government says, normally when they do like they are rallying for election, they would say, we need to create hundred jobs. We need to create this, we need to create that. You know, so I think for us as organizations, you know, I know community engagement, I've been involved in stuff. I am friends with, Bi, you know, and stuff like that. And then I realized that with institution, they are forced sometimes to follow the rule of an institution. Mm -hmm. And I think we need another different institution that says our role is to fundraise funds to create and help to sustain other organizations. Because other organizations become like a charity organization because uh, lack of education, reading and writing, resources to profunding that will support specifically what they are interested in. So I think if we could do like a database of 
what exists in this town and then mm. and sit together and say okay um x for me i don't have money but i know i have a mind that has ideas you know because i have so much to think about i live with creatives you know here at the black power station these guys i know they do sound engineer they never went to school for that i know guys who could do plumbing i know guys who could do anything with their hands you know write rap do make beats so there's so much creativity we can't even rely on the bigger institutions because they have their own mandate to follow so yeah. we have our own pool of uh of our own institution like let's say students who would say look we would want let's say each res at roads university would say we're going to start fundraising every year to put money in that pool i have an interest let's say a student say i'm interested in film making my pool of five rand and or 200 rands i'll drop and that is for those who are interested in photography and you know you have that pool of money but that would be monitored via roads or community engagement to just financially support people but they will report to those custodians of people who are just supporting the town but we cannot do it with this institution that already exists because they have their own mandate their own mandate has to do with their own board and all that and they might come to x and say we want to fund the black power station but we want the black power station to do this by making black power station to deviate to the outlook to the things it loses currency you understand so i think for me i'm i'm very interested in finding a tank of of, of let's say a think tank of people who say look let's write a proposal for these five institutions and roads is big enough to be trusted by any funder to proper reports but the funding will be given to all these institution who cannot access this funding but these people will be able to create jobs for other people you know and i know for a fact is that most people are encouraged to do non profit organization a non profit organization they have a, a time span but if we create a pool of people and say we want to support people who want to create job for financially driven ideas and that is what is needed in this town you know where people are encouraged to someone who's cutting grass to be into environmentally friendly ideas because there's many guys in the township who carry machines of cutting grass you know there's many guys who are artists don't know what to do with them. they don't do products to sell so so there's many things i think we need to shift the the, the way we look at things we need to yeah. just innovate around the idea that people need jobs so let's create a pool of people who could associate themselves with bringing money for those um ideas of bringing money to other people and then those people create jobs for other people and then becomes a wing you know if they say makanda is a city of saints let's show it mm-hmm. good and i'll <laughs> push back on something x has just said <laughs> um i think that the way our society is structured fortunately or unfortunately is around these institutions we have the municipality we have the government we have roads we have private schools um and i think that one thing that um ex did raise um nuancely is you know we need courageous leadership and my argument is that we need courageous leadership from within these systems and i think one thing i really admire about dai our director is that wherever she goes and whatever she does it's constantly challenging these systems to support the innovation in our society you know the way that research is done ex alluded to how people you know kind of come and extract knowledge from locals that's being challenged now you know we have a whole research um division that's dedicated to engaged research where you're doing community based research with what 
communities want to be researched, how they want to progress themselves. Um, so we need things that challenge from the inside um, so that we are able to assist that because otherwise these big institutions are always just going to be the stumbling block if we're not systematically yeah. changing them. And this, I mean, it is a long-term thing, but it happen. Um, we can't just create something new. Um, in my opinion, we have to actually, we can add and we can adapt and be flexible um, with the new additions. But the key drivers in our society at the moment are these huge institutions that need to be changed. Thanks for adding on to that, Anna. Um, it is 12 o'clock, and while this has been an incredibly fascinating discussion, um, I think in the interests of wanting to respect everyone's time, and that some of you guys said you needed to go 12, um, I, I yeah. think there's a lot for us to think about in terms of how we take action in the future in our own individual capacities and in the spheres that we're working in, whether we're students or we're in community engagements or a skate park or a black power station, you know, there's a lot of avenues to make a change. And it's awesome to see so many of you trying to do that every day. So thank you for all the work that you guys are doing. Thank you for taking the time for joining us today on this panel discussion. Um, it's been an honor to talk to every single one of you. And hopefully we can do it again soon. Um, that was very interesting. <coughs> Yeah, thanks yeah, for bringing us together. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a blessing to be able to do it. Thank you, everyone. Oh, yeah. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, too, bro.